Hi, everyone. Yes, I got this question from a student who asked me to explain what a computed column is. My name is Adiola. Well, a computer column actually, um, you know, are virtual columns that are not physically stored in the table unless the column is marked persisted. So values for computer columns are recalculated every time they are referenced in a query. Please note, you cannot, you cannot insert into a computer column because you don't have the right, because um, computer column gets its value from different columns because of the way it's been set. Values for computed columns are updated when any column that are part of their calculation change. By marking a computer column as persisted, we can create an index on a computer column so that you know your query performs so fast and um, you know gets optimized. And also computer columns used as check, foreign key, or not null constraints must be marked persistent. So which means they must remain persistent. So let's go to some examples. Well, before I go to this example, the example I'm going to give now, it's actually about, for, for example, let's just take an example of a smaller bank, you know, using this as example, you, in this bank, when you go to the bank to try open an account, definitely um, automatically, it's not the person opening the account for you that gives you the account number. The account number gets generated um, through, the, through the software. And what is making this account to get generated through the software? It's what we are going to show you, something like that. So automatically, um, an account number gets populated for you. So. I'm going to show you a good example of this. Let's go here. Now, um, for you to create a computer column, this is a computer column here. For you to create a computer column, you need certain, certain parts of the query, certain parts of the um, you know, table to be able to measure up and give you certain values in that column. For example, now, I am creating this table. If you look at this table, um, let me show you what we are trying to do. I'm going to show you what the table is presently and what we are trying to do to change it to. Now, if you look at this, if you look at this, we have, we have the account type ID, first name, last name, date of birth, gender, address, and account officer. So in this case, we don't have anything unique here. We don't have anything unique. Nothing is unique right here. That is nothing that you can say. Um, you know, when we say something is unique, we're talking about things like social security, um, account number in a bank cannot be true. Something that cannot be duplicated. So we don't have anything unique here. So for us to be able to say, create something unique, that will be generated automatically by the system. So we can use some like computer column. So now for me, in this case, it is not necessary for you to create ID, but I mean, in this case, I am using ID and I want the ID to be generated, auto-generated also. So I'm gonna set that to identity, one-to-one. -one. So which means um, it's gonna start setting one, two, three, four, and all that. So if you look at this, what we have here, I'm repeating the account type ID, first name, last name, date of birth, gender, address, account officer. Now I'm repeating the same thing. The only two things that I'm adding here are the ID and the, account, and the customer number. So the ID, I want it auto-generated and the account number, I want it auto-generated. So look at what, look at what Look at what gives us the customer number now. Now, the ID, I'm setting that as, as identity, account type ID, 
making that it's already integer, it's referencing a certain um, column in another table, which is a foreign key, you know, it's an integer. But here, I want to merge, if you look at this now, I'm merging the account type ID and I'm merging, um, I'm merging the um, like, you know, six numbers to that. I'm merging six numbers, six zeros in the middle, and I declare here that I want the total number to be seven. So, which means account type ID, which is just three numbers, plus this is going to be nine, then plus the ID, which is going to be 10. If you look at the ID here, so I'm casting account type ID, I'm casting it to be Vacha, and I say, okay, it shouldn't be more than seven. But I mean, it's three. I'm, you know, you just have to set some number. I'm just putting it. We can decide to increase it there. So when I do that, I say customer number as, you know, the account type ID. And on the right side, I said add six zeros. Then plus the ID. The ID comes in one. You can see here one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So when it gets to 10, it takes out one zero and it's going to just, you know, at the end of the day, what we are going to have here is going to be 10 numbers. Okay. So because we have set this to be seven. So we want this to be persisted. Okay. Persisted means it's going to be, it's going to persist. And um, if it's going to be persisted, it's going to be able to store the, the data also. And we want it to be a primary key. Okay, so if we run this, we are going to create something that will also generate customer number for each of the customers, which we don't have in the other one. So let me execute this. So in this case, if we do this, so we see that this is set now, but the, the unique thing, the funny thing is this, the ID, and the customer number, if you are trying to insert into this table, the ID and customer number, you cannot insert into them. The system automatically generates IDs for this. The ID and the customer number. Note, the ID and the account type ID and certain numbers form the customer number. So let's do this insert. If you look at this insert, I'm inserting the account type ID the customer's uh, first name, the last name, the date of birth, the gender, the address, and the uh, account officer. So if we run this three, note, we don't have ID, we don't have customer number. So let's insert this. Three rows um, executed, and let's look at this. Voila, you see that? So. ID is auto-generated, yeah. the customer number is also auto-generated. So if I try to add one more, let's say, um, let's, let's add like three more. Now you see that it's giving the account, we said here that look at this now, look at Alan Ray. Alan Ray has a 208 account type ID that we set here. So it's adding one, two, three, four, five, six, then seven. Look at this. It's now it's giving the numbers in sequence. So one, two, three. Disregarding whatever is in the front. It's just gonna give one, two, three. Gonna keep keep giving that. Let's add three more. Now we still want to maintain the account type ID. Then let's change the name to um, let me see K. Then um, K, sorry, K and um, Phil, um, Il. I'm maintaining the same, some, some of the, I don't have to repeat this values. I mean, this is just example. Um, let me say Guy and his last name is Raymond. Um, I'm maintaining the other things too. Let's say Nancy and his last name is 
Um, um, okay, Robert. Okay, let's insert this now. So, let's look at what we have. In this case, you see that this gets auto populated. So, if a bank uses this, meaning that the, the, the customer number, which, is, which serves as the account number, gets auto generated, auto generated. So, you don't, so this, this helps us to maintain some kinds of integrity in the sense that it is not human being that is putting the number. It, the number has been calculated itself. So this number can never, never be um, populated twice. It's unique to all, to different roles. It's unique to different um, customers. I think that solves um, what we are trying to do now. So I want to say thank you.